What's up everyone? Steve again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. There's heaps of cool stuff just like this. Now you might have seen my latest video and I had this Toyan FS L200 four-stroke two-cylinder nitro-powered engine running in this 1.8 scale Defender, which originally was a brushed two-speed uh, crawler. Now, I've had a lot of questions from my last video because it was really popular, and I appreciate you guys watching it and liking it and commenting. It uh, really means a lot. Now, this video is for you guys. I definitely will do another running video just for it. I'm going to do a crawling video, but the weather is pretty crap, and I just need to tidy up a few things before I get that video started. Now, to cap it off, this was originally a 1.8 scale brushed crawler. Basic. When I bought this, I think it was a few months ago, it was only $200. And for 1.8 scale and for what it, uh, the features I had, I thought it was a great value. If I find the video, I'll leave a little card up there so you can go watch it. It's a really good crawler, but the thing I loved about it, it's a hard body plastic and it's 1.8 scale. Perfect for these little engine conversions. Now, I originally had this FS100. This is a single cylinder in here as well. Made it up pretty much everything how it is, except for the motor is different. But this is pretty cool. Has a fair bit of power, but for the weight and uh, the size of this, the two cylinder is much better. I'll leave the link for all the engines in the description down below. And if I can find the link for this, I'll leave it there as well if you want to do your own conversions. But quick video, I want to show you what you need to do and what uh, you know steps are needed to get it to where it is today. Okay, first up, the fuel. It uh, is a nitro-powered engine, four-stroke, but I'm running 20% nitro. I think the uh, Toyota recommends 15 to 20 odd percent. So. That's what I'm running. Now the body, like I said, it's 1.8 scale. It's hard plastic. If you haven't seen the original video I just done previously with the running video, go check that out. But it has opening doors. Each door opens and it's perfect for this because you can get into the electronics, the receiver, everything like that you can get without taking the body off. It even has a back door here as well, if I remember. Yeah, it does have a little back door here so you can open the, the back up as well. Really cool. Heaps of space in here. There we go. And it does also come in a white version as well. Um, I'll leave the link down below where it, uh, it's not like a wagon. But like I said, look at that. It's got room for your, that's your oil catch can. Well, it's called an oil reservoir, but that's a catch can. And for your fuel tank as well. But it's not uh, screwed on as yet, so I can take it off. Yes, there is a hood as well. It's just here. Um, this sits a little bit higher than the single cylinder. So I was thinking, hmm, I would think it looks pretty cool if I cut just enough room out for the head. I think that'll look mad as well. Um, pretty sweet. So it does have a hood that will go on later. And the benefit of this body as well, this is where the front grille grows and normally it's got a piece of plastic here. Now you cut that out and what you get is you can get actually a real grill there just like that so it sees through and actually draws air in because this engine doesn't need a radiator, it is air cooled. So it uses a fan here to cool it down and it works really well. I think you can buy a radiator kit for it, but it doesn't, doesn't need it. It works really well. So I've just cut out that. I'm going to put it up on there, on there as well. And so you can just suck in a little bit more air. But I've never had any issues with heating, uh, with, heating with these motors. All right, let's take off this body. It does come with lights as well, if, if you're into that type of thing. Now I did explain this a bit in the previous video, but I will a little bit uh, further now. So, like I said, two cylinder, it's just attached via a little aluminium plate that is screwed through the C-channel chassis. It is all metal, but the thing about this, it's got so much room. Now when you buy the engine, it does come with this flywheel installed, although there's no clutch or anything like that, so you need to get that separately. It does come with the holes for the pins. I've just pressed, fit some pins for the clutch and installed a, I'm not too sure how many tooth uh, clutch bell that is, but uh, that's it. You can buy all the uh, components to get it up and running if you want. But that is that. So it doesn't include that when you buy the kit. Now the motor is attached to a Revo or Traxxas Revo 3.3 two speed, two speeds forward and two speeds in reverse with a brake. Now this is it here. These are fantastic. I use them all the time. I've used it for this one, the single cylinder. And I've also used it, this is another project I have. This is a four cylinder. That's a Toyan four-cylinder, and I've got a Revo as well. I'm waiting on a 22-tooth clutch belt for that. Hopefully that'll be in soon, but that is on for another video. So you've got to attach it to a gearbox. You can use whatever you want, but these are fantastic. You've just got to get it up, made it nicely. Look at that. Really nice mesh there. So engine, clutch, your two-speed transmission. Obviously, for uh, nitro, you need a brake. With electric, you obviously don't need it. And reverse. So it's got forward, reverse, and a brake. That's why these are perfect. Now it's four-wheel drive. 
the it's got a front shaft there. The rear one here is a Traxxas, I think, Rebo shaft. As you can see, it's pretty chunky. Um, the back one, the, sorry, the front one is a little bit more tricky because it's really narrow and you need to angle up the front diff to accept that. Otherwise, the yoke is too much of an extreme angle and it could cause binding issues and premature wear. Okay, moving on, this is a stock rear and front differential, nothing has been changed. Stock suspension, in the previous video you would have saw this bouncing up and down, there was no oil in there. I put some oil in there so it's much nicer. The back I haven't changed but it's, it's all pretty good. Now apart from that, everything else is standard on the chassis. The wheels, the tyres, the suspension, the links, everything like that is stock. The steering server here, I've moved it. That's, uh, I'm not sure, I think a 30 kilo one of my own but uh, it works really well, no issues there, and the body fits in just in here, so it's a perfect fit. Now move on to the electronics. With any nitro, you need a servo for the throttle and the brake, and obviously one for the steering. You also need one here for the shifting in for reverse and forward, just like that. Very easy. And the way I remote start this, I'll turn the remote on in, in a minute, is using this system here as well, which was the original way you started these, with this little like servo tester. And that's another little servo just there. I'll turn it on in a minute so I can show you. So that's all electronics. Here, to start this, you have a brushless little motor there. That's a well, brushless starter motor on a belt. And that's got its own ESC, which requires normally, a, it says, a three-cell battery. And also the glow, floods, glow plug igniters, there's two. The one, you only see one here, is a, it's got just for glow plug. The one here, it's a combo of a glow plug igniter and an ESC together. And once it's running, you can disconnect this. I've never had any issues. I just leave it plugged in, but uh, you can unplug it. The run time's only for like about eight or ten minutes, so I don't see any real issues with that. Now, obviously, you've got to set this all up yourself. And this is how I've done it. I'll, how I do a project or however, when I approach something like this, I want to set it up so it looks like it can, it kind of semi comes out like this from the factory. I think it looks pretty neat. The servers are quite in line, especially the throttle servo here the brake and the gear selector there. The fuel tank's in a pretty good spot because you can all reach it when you, you know, can be accessible when you open the door and same as the oil catch can here. So I think it turned out pretty good. Obviously there's, if I want to do it again, I could um, change a few things, but uh, the batteries all go in there. I kind of made it all a little containment area for it and the LiPo just goes in there and it's strapped down as well. So that's all you need. So obviously for any um, servos need power, so I just use this NICAD battery and the LiPo here is for the other electronics and that is pretty much it. Now the fuel, like I said, that's just a basic fuel tank. I use 20% nitro and because it's got dual carbs you need this little, like a Y splitter. So you need that as well and this return line is at the front of the motor there, right there, that's at the bottom of the crankcase and because it's a nitro the oil is in the fuel so once it gets burnt the oil runs down lubricates all the moving parts and then comes out this tube. Now, you can have it just, you know, spitting out on the floor, but I don't like that. It looks messy. So I've just done a return tube all the way here to this little container. Threaded it onto the side here, a little vent hole so it can actually work, and it just captures the fuel. So that's about four runs, as you can see the oil in the bottom. It does work really well. And this is just a little, like, paint container from a little arts and crafts store, and that's all there is to it. But it, it works really well. And uh, captures it all, you can just empty it out, otherwise it just spits out on the floor and it looks, it kind of looks really messy. So that's the overview of the actual car. Now, you know, it, people ask me how much does it cost? Well, this motor's, I mean, Australian dollars here, 500. You know, the, the chassis now, I don't know how much, it used to be 200, might be three, 400 now. The servos and all that can all add up fairly quickly. Now, you might have these in, in storage, you might already have a lot of servos lying around. But uh, if you don't, it can easily be over $1,000 to do this kit. Because I think the Revo transmission alone, you can get them from Jenny RC on an eBay store. Um, I think they're about fifty odd dollars. You know, in Australia we get ripped with anything, even shipping. So that's something to consider. Your radio gear, you know, your batteries, it all adds up. But if you're into this stuff like I am, hacking things, you probably already have this lying around. If not, you're probably looking easy over twelve hundred dollars, I think, to to get this up and running. You know, it might sound steep. Um, you might you can get a crawler. Yes, they can do that for fifth of the price. But it's more about having fun with this, you know, and I enjoy doing it. Now, the tyres are stock. As you can see, the foam is very, very soft. So it looks like it's got a flat uh, flat tyre every time. I was going to run these BF Goodridge uh, Baja TAs, I believe. Now, these are from the, the was it Rock, the Bomber, I think, the Axial kit. Now, they do fit. 
although they just need to be widened a little bit, a little bit of a spacer inside here because it's rubbing against the steering mechanism there as well. But that's all. I'll probably change them later on, but uh, I'll leave the stock tyres. Now this part here, that's obviously an air cleaner, oh sorry, an air filter. 3D printed this to go over the dual carbs and uh, you know, it just sits on there nicely. I don't want to collect any dirt and stuff because this motor is quite expensive. It does sound cool and uh, onto that I will be doing an exhaust system. I'll probably run it through here, wrap it around here and hopefully bring it out to the back but that's in, a, in another video. Just need more time, you know, these things do take time and I do work full time. So, you know, whenever I get a spare chance, I get this up and running. Plug the batteries in, I'll put a little bit of fuel in there and I'll start it up and just to show you, in case you haven't seen the other video, go check it out. Really popular and that's why I've done this video. Not just because, you know, I had a lot of people asking questions, but if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's, it's really cool. And don't worry guys, I will be doing more videos of it running. Alright, so if you watched the previous video, this might look pretty familiar, but I never get sick of doing this. I think it's, I think it's really cool. So everything's connected. Steering, throttle, brake, uh, forward and reverse is here. And I need to start it with this push button. So it's pretty damn easy. I've got it idling quite nice, so there we go. Pretty cool. Pretty damn loud, that's for sure. But how cool is that slow idle? Really. It'll be really cool in a rock bouncer or a, or a monster truck. Out there. That's the benefit of having a bit of, bit of that's, sorry, that's the benefit of having electric start. It does have two gears, it did change then. It changes really early. I love the reverse function now. The reverse, the reverse works as long as it's got a slow idle. If you try to change, if you're trying to change uh, when it's high, it won't do it. Do more videos with this, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> it's awesome. Cool oh, to get up this.
So you can see you could have a lot of fun with these. Get the brakes. Brakes work well. quite nicely. It does run out of fuel quite quickly because of the smaller tank and the two cylinders, but it does work really well. Running out of fuel, running a bit low. I'll do another video of this. I wanted to just show you this again. A lot of glass at into it. And I just wanted to show it. I'll do a separate rock video. Pretty damn cool though. If I miss any questions, please leave them down in the comments. It's not meant to be a speed demon, that's for sure. That's pretty decent. Run out of fuel. <laughs> Could resist another flyby. Let's see if I can get this airborne just here. So yeah, it's not a speed demon. It's loud as hell though. The neighbours would lo love you if you do one of these. Bring it back over here. Yeah, the neighbours will, will cherish you when you use them. Okay, let's try. <laughs> yep, pretty loud. Right, that's what these are. It's all for fun. Oh, smack that. Can we get out of it? Put it in reverse. It's hung up. Put it back in uh, four. So you can definitely change the gearing, I reckon. And that'll definitely make for a kind of a maybe a better crawler, that's for sure. But the power, like it has no problem getting up. You know, if you floor it, it'll just hit the wheel. Definitely not bouncing as much. Sorry, it stopped there, ran out of battery, but uh, just change it. 
have that slow idle. Give it a kind of shake it a little. Bring it back in. Definitely be cool in a monster truck. Right, last run. I said it was going to be a, a short video. Start with a bit of oxygen. There we go. So, a little bit longer than expected. I'm going to button up a few of the things, see if I can get those other tyres on, fix the hood, uh, a few little things like that. It seems to be running fairly well, um, and I'll take it on the trails for a proper crawl. But, uh, like I said, it seems to do pretty well. Um, just another video for the guys who had questions and. Uh, anything like that so please guys if you haven't please uh, hit that like button share this video if you haven't please subscribe check out the links if you're interested in these and uh, I'll see you in the next video cheers guys and forgot to mention for all that are interested current head temp is 100 degrees Celsius down near the block at the bottom of the crankcase it's saying 72 and if you want to see how much oil that took there we go there. Pretty cool.